one of the perks of playing the lute on YouTube is that I'm occasionally discovered by video game composers who are looking for a lutenist to play on their soundtrack. And one of the video games I played on is officially out as of right now. So in this video, we're gonna talk about that game, we're gonna to listen to the recordings I made, and I'm gonna give you a sort of behind the scene glimpse into the recording process of what it's like to record loot on a video game soundtrack. So let's dive right in. Growing up, my brothers and I played a lot of video games, and I distinctly remember that most of the games I liked had really epic, uh, moving soundtracks. I'm thinking about Skyrim. <laughs> Fable. And Knights of the Old Republic. All of these soundtracks were so important in terms of capturing the ambiance or the feel of each moment of the video game, depending on where you were, you know, if you're on a mission, if you're in a tavern, if you're in a fight, uh, you know, whatever was going on, the music played such a heavy role. And this is why I'm so excited to be playing on a couple different video game soundtracks now, is because so many people are going to have that magical experience of playing and having that ambiance in their ears, and it's going to be my loot. So this video is all about the game that just came out called Evil by Vest Games. They're an indie game development company based in Germany. So let's listen to a bit of what I recorded as well as look at some of the live footage from the game. The original idea of this song was that it was going to be some sort of tavern music, and now it's officially called Murky Brew. That's such a catchy tune and I really enjoyed playing it. Let's talk now a little bit about the recording process. So this recording session was actually done remotely. I did it right here in my studio. Basically how it went is Johnny, the composer, he would write to me with some ideas. He would send me kind of like a lead sheet of uh, the chord changes he wanted. He'd also include some audio of him playing guitar or maybe some MIDI. And usually it wasn't the full fleshed out idea of what he wanted, it was kind of like the feel or the general sense of the melody. And my role on this project as the early music guy, <laughs> was to not only play the music on my lute, but also add a sense of early style to it so that the, the game had that medieval-ish uh, feel. Now I have to mention here, it's become really colloquial to say medieval for all things that kind of seem early. So like Game of Thrones is medieval, Renaissance fairs are medieval, all lutes are medieval. Um, <laughs> just so you know, since my channel is concerned with like, you know, historicity and everything, this type of lute is actually a Renaissance instrument, not a medieval instrument. There was a medieval lute, but it's sort of a different, different beast. <laughs> so you have the medieval period, which is like before 1400, and then roughly 1400 to 1600 is the Renaissance, and 1600 to roughly 1750 is the Baroque. 
period. So medieval doesn't mean all of those periods, but often people say it and that's what they mean. So the composer asked me for something like that. Really he, what he wanted was like an old style, something that sounded uh, ancient. So I told him about what the loop could do, what it couldn't do, what keys work. We settled on G minor, it's a really good key on the lute. So the composer would send me some fragments of melodies and some bluesy riffs or and I would transpose them and, and fit them onto the lutes and see if I could make them sound good. So eventually I came up with this. Obviously the style here is a bit bluesy and jazzy and not really lute-like, but it's kind of like a you know, kind of like a blend of different styles all together. And my job really was to add that early sound. So let me tell you a little bit about how I did that. Around 1600, a really common chord progression was the passacaglia. It's a descending uh, four-note pattern in the bass. G F E flat D with chords above it. G minor, uh, D first inversion, E flat major, D major. You can substitute some chords there, but that's the general passacaglia. And often on the last two chords, when you get E flat major to D major, that's called a Phrygian cadence for you music theory nerds, often you can add a suspension. So instead of playing E flat major, you can play E flat major with a, a D against it. That's a major seven chord, very jazzy. <laughs> down to a six, so it, it resolves to a uh, C minor chord. So, very beautiful dissonance. And that resolves really nicely down to D major, the dominant. And to make it even more dissonant, so you have that seven, six suspension, and then instead of just playing a D major chord, what's really common is a four, three suspension. So inside the D major chord, I do a fourth suspension rather than playing the major third F sharp, I play a G and then I resolve that down to an F sharp. You can hear it better if I play it up the octave. That's the wrong note and then the right note. <laughs> so the very early music sounding cadence is, and it resolves to G minor, or it can resolve very often to major actually. That's called a Picardy third when you're in a minor key, but you resolve major. So this is one of those ways that I found a little bit of early musical style to, to add into the video game. Another technique really idiomatic and common on the lute was trills, especially in cadences. So at the end of the piece, I added this big arpeggiated flourish. And then I ended up with a long trill So these are just a few small things I added that are very lute-like and early music sounding uh, that sort of blend well in this sort of stylistic mashup here of blues and early music. But like I said, I really like it. I think it goes so well with the ambiance of the, the video game. So I'd finish my recordings and I'd send them over to the composer and he'd give me some feedback. I might tweak a couple things, punch in a few moments. Uh, hey, actually we need something simpler here. Hey, can you actually make the ending more climactic? And then back and forth until they were happy. And then they would do the, you know, the mixing and mastering and then put it in the game. Now the second song I recorded for this game uh, was much thicker in orchestration. There was percussion, a lot of other uh, kind of like MIDI instruments, I think, like mandolin, accordion, uh, a bunch of different sounds. And it had a really nice groove to it. So this was so much fun for me because I spend most of my time playing concerts of, say, Baroque music, and my main goal is to be authentic as possible, uh, as historical as possible to what they did at the time. So I'm trying to use, you know, gut strings, historical technique, read the treatises, all these things. Obviously this game is not that at all. This game is something modern, it's about creating a feel, to create ambiance in a game, and to have that extra charm of the loot in there, a real loot, not a midi loot, uh, is really a privilege for me to do. So I'm happy with this. I really hope I get to do a lot more. 
So thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you are interested in supporting this channel, you can always subscribe. It's free and it really helps me a lot. You can also check out my online classical guitar course, which is out. It's six hours long. I have lots of students who are super happy with it. So check that out if you're interested. I also have an online music school with lots of teachers who are specialists in a variety of different plucked instruments. Uh, they can all teach you weekly on Zoom. And before you go, let's watch the trailer for this new game, Evil, which is officially out. Hello there, and welcome to Evil. As your mayor, let me be the first to say, this is a safe place to- <sighs> Another mayor dead. They don't last very long around here. This used to be a quiet, peaceful place. Times have changed. These days, no one is safe, not even in their own homes. And the conspirators are to blame. They lurk in the shadows and strike when nobody's watching. However, all hope is not lost. Each one of you possesses remarkable skills that will aid in your quest for justice. Special abilities that not only help you uncover the conspirators, but also prove your innocence. You will have to trap, spy, and even kill to help ensure your survival. For some of you, why be so lucky? Fear not, because even in the afterlife, you can aid your fellow villagers. You must work together and find the conspirators hiding in plain sight. With the information you've gathered, cast your vote to eliminate the Reekers of Havoc and restore order to evil. That's unless you're one of them.